canning our deer meat. We butchered the three deer, uh, the last of our deer, and ground the meat. Um, we used an, a LEM uh, electric uh, grinder that was gifted to us for Christmas last year, which was a blessing. Um, but I do highly suggest that you also have a hand crank um, grinder available and handy um, in the event that you don't have power um, so that you are able to grind meat if need be um, or other things. Um, so it makes it really handy to have them. It's just a lot of work, especially when you have really big animals. Uh, elk and moose are huge. So you, it's a pretty much an all-day project grinding meat, and you feel like you need a new shoulder when you're finished. Um, but I have these jars here ready to go, and I want to just show you how easy this is. This is just, it's so easy um, and, and just an awesome way to do things. You put your burger in the jar and leave about an inch space at the top. You do not need to put any liquid in here. I've already put a teaspoon of salt, sea salt, and a teaspoon of garlic in here. And then um, what you do, my canner is a Presto 23 quart um, canner cooker, and um, I can fit seven jars in there at a time. And hallelujah, my second one arrived today, so that will make things go a lot quicker. I also have 50 pounds of carrots to uh, process this week and I want to do my pumpkin also so it's going to be a busy week in the kitchen canning and I will be sure to um, share those with you also but it's real simple all you do is I have these seals lids whatever you want to call them soaking in boiling water and you want to make sure that these are really dry there should be no liquid on the seal and you just wipe them down you wipe the rim of your jar off, making sure that is completely dry and that there's nothing on there. I had already wiped these down after I put the burger in because it can get sloppy. Just put that on there, put your ring on there, um, I don't have them over here at the moment, but this is a little too small for that one, but you get the idea. You put the ring on it and tighten it, just not overly tight, but tighten it down and put it in your canner. Now my canner has a fill line on it and there are instructions in that come with the canner. Um, explaining what you need to do with meats and vegetables and so forth but there is a fill line in there that you need to abide by because if you have too much water um, it will push the seals up off of your um, jars and cause you problems they won't seal um, the other thing is um, mine is a dial um, I'll show you what I mean It is a dial gauge so um, it is recommended for our elevation um, to cook for an hour and a half uh, between the 10 and the 12 on here. So um, it's something that you do have to monitor. You can't walk away from this because it is um, constantly gaining pressure. Even if you turn it down, it still continues to build pressure. So you've got to watch it and, and um, supervise it. So my project today has been working in near the kitchen so that I could keep an eye on things. Now once you put this lid on the canner, it does have a seal so it will lock in and seal tight and you turn it on and what will happen is you will see steam coming out of this vent hole here and once that steam starts coming out of there regularly excuse me one second there is a cap for those of you that haven't canned before you put that down on the vent and that form keeps the steam inside and causes the pressure to start to build this little gauge here will eventually pop up when there's enough pressure in there and it will stay up and then this will start to move. So uh, again, once that starts moving, you definitely want to keep an eye on that so that that doesn't go above the number that you um, are supposed to be set at. The other thing you want to be careful of, um, in this instance, the burger in here is, is frozen. Um, just our temperatures are really cold. I think it's like 15 degrees right now outside. So um, it, it is frozen and it's cold. So normally you want your canner to be warm, but because this is so cold, what I'm doing is putting cold water in my canner. It's just going to take it a little longer to heat up, but I don't want these jars to crack. If I would sit these jars in hot water right now, they would crack. So you got to be careful of that. Just remember you're working with glass. Um, so then I'm going to turn it on and everything will start heating up together um, versus uh, this getting you know, uh, temperature shock and, and uh, breaking um, or weakening that it breaks when it's uh, under pressure. But that's all there is to this. Um, I will show you what it looks like when it's finished. This is a jar 
it, I just pulled off the shelf that we're going to have for supper. Um, it's, you know, you can see the, the jellied um, broth in here. Like I said, you don't put any liquid in. This is from the meat, and you can open this up and just start spooning it out of here. It's, it's awesome. It's like opening up a, a can from the grocery store of canned chicken. So it makes meals very easy. Um, we did 47 quarts with the first two deer. I am at 28 quarts right now with the next seven to go in, and I'm not even halfway through. So we are going to have a lot of deer meat on the shelf this year. God is good. We've been very blessed. But that's, that's all there is to it. Um, I am going to put some notes at the end of the video also, but I have two very good friends um, that I highly uh, recommend to you. Um, simplycanning.com is uh, Sharon Peterson. She is a wealth of information in regard to canning, and you need to know something. She is a very good resource. And the other um, information I will put at the end of the video uh, there is a new canning video available, which I highly recommend, and off the top of my head, I am not recalling the actual name of the video, but um, I will add that in a little later, and actually, I will talk more about that. Instead of putting it at the end of the video, what I will just do is talk about that when I do my pumpkin, um, so that I can give you more information and more details on that. Um, it's been a crazy day in the kitchen, and my brain is not functioning anymore. But um, thank you for joining me. Stay tuned. I will do a lot more videos this winter. Um, and uh, this really couldn't be any easier. It makes life so much easier all the way around. Um, so if your freezer is full. Oh, I did want to mention one other thing. Um, I'm not using them right now because of the size of my jars. These are the wide mouth. But Tatler um, seals for jarring are phenomenal because you can reuse them unlimited. Um, uses so it makes it really nice because once you use these metal ones they need to be thrown away um, so these are the way to go because if anything ever were to happen and um, you know things fall apart maybe the way they're heading um, this will give you the opportunity to continue canning and and be able to put up food uh, which is a necessity um, so I highly recommend those you can find them on Amazon and also on their website um, the other thing I wanted to mention to you is if you purchase your canning jars by the case, um, you can purchase the ball jars um, and the cur jars or care jars um, by the case and they have the, the, the lids and the rings already on them and depending if they've been shipped in extremely hot temperatures or if you put them in a location where it gets really hot. When we got here I stocked up on canning jars and I put them in the shed and the shed was like 90 degrees during the summer and I got them out and I canned carrots. Well I didn't realize that what had happened is those seals were no good anymore and the lids were no good anymore because they had sealed tight so they were completely uh, worthless. So just be really careful of that. Check your seals. Um, you can definitely see the difference on them. Um, just check them and be sure that um, they're not ruined or, or that they are still usable if that happens to you. Um, because it's a real shame to put all that work into it and have your food not seal. Um, you can put it through the process again to try to get it to seal, but it was, they had appeared like they had sealed, and then we put them on the shelf and they started to unseal. So just be careful of that. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you have questions, I, I don't hesitate to ask. I'm always encouraging people to ask questions. You can check. Uh, more information out on my website at mountainwomanjournals.com and um, if you're into trapping my husband is running a 20 mile trap line on foot this year and you can find him on YouTube also at Mountain Man Journal so thanks so much for joining me uh, you guys take care and until the next video God bless